Welcome to another episode of Frankie D Crafter. This week, Lucas from Bartscraft has challenged the community. Well, I'll actually just let him tell you himself. I challenge you to build peasant level dungeon tiles. Do it quickly and from cheap, easily available materials. All right, sounds good to me. I guess I'll be using cardboard. In this challenge, I'll really be taking advantage of my drawing skills, but to be honest with you, you don't need to be an amazing artist or a good artist to get done what I get done in the video. You just need a little bit of pointers here and there, and you can make yourself some great looking tiles out of cardboard. I start off by picking some scraps I have laying around. This project will give me an excuse to actually use up some of the cardboard that I've been hoarding around for the last year. I like to make my tiles 4x4 because I find it easier to make rooms out of this measurement. I also don't like hallways in my dungeons unless they're labyrinths, but in case you want to make some hallways, I make them 2x4. Why 2 inches? Well, I want my players to feel cornered and claustrophobic if they ever come across a monster in a hallway. I'll also be making a 10x8 because I like boss rooms, and I feel like you always need that one piece that you don't have to put together. It just is. Another thing that I was keeping in mind was the downside of using cardboard. Its biggest downfall is that it can warp once you start to add moisture by painting it. This has a simple fix. Stack two pieces together instead of one and make sure that the corrugations are going in two different directions. I also like using hot glue for this step. This should minimize warping. Let's start painting these. I start off with a cheap gray paint. And to add detail, I start dabbing a lighter gray to the board. I make sure to try to get a lot of paint off the brush before I actually apply it onto the tile. This way I have more control over the design. It's always easier to add than to retract. After that dries, we start to put that lighter gray on the other side of the tile. And yes, I forgot to mention, these are double sided tiles. This will act as a primer for the other tile on the other side. I do this because I see that there is writing on the other side and I don't want that to come through my color on that side of the tile. This side of the tile will be more fitting to my goblin terrain while the other side can be used for any regular dungeon or castle. When it comes to gridding the tiles, I'll save you a headache and ask that you don't use a brush. It's a flat surface. Just use a marker. I don't even use black to grid. For these tiles, I use a dark gray. I feel like the transition between the tiles looks better this way. Because you can still make the corners where the tiles meet black. Adding even more contrast where you really want it. If I wasn't under quarantine, I would have gone out and tested a beige marker to see how that would look. As for the beige side, I use an even lighter gray. I take a fine black pen and start to add details like cracks. Since there is no texture to help us with the detail, we have to improvise. It is truly up to you on how cracked you want these tiles to be. It is completely reasonable to leave most of these the way they are, if you want to cut down on crafting time. This is the step that I feel like is the most interesting. I use a white gel pen for all the highlights. If you are good enough to do this step with a brush, congratulations! I trust my drawing skills better than my painting skills. I 
I even use it for dots on all the tiles. I feel like this is a great way to fake texture on flat surfaces. It's effective enough without any fancy techniques. You pretty much follow these same steps through the other side. Another step you might want to do is to highlight the cracks by adding more lowlights. This will really make them pop and stand out. It's really up to you on how much time you're willing to spend on these details. And that's my take on great looking tiles on the fly on the cheap. I think I did alright. Considering I only use cardboard, I would use this. Matter of fact, I think I am switching over to these. First of all, they are super easy to make, but most importantly, they don't slide as much as foam tiles. They look great, and I can always make more whenever I have scraps from other projects. I can even make different tiles for different areas in my game. The possibilities here are endless. Alright, let's take a look at what Lucas did. Hopefully we didn't make the same video. Hopefully. I should have guessed he was gonna use oatmeal cardstock here, but I'm still impressed with the finished product. Looks like he was also able to get a lot of detail despite the flat surfaces. I would definitely make these for my table. I think it's impressive that we were able to come up with completely different ideas for such a simple material. It goes to show you that you don't need fancy material to make fancy terrain. Also don't forget to take a look on his channel after you're done here on what might be the most essential piece of terrain for any crafting channel or any crafting table. And like always, if you like what we do here, subscribe. And if you wanna help the channel a little bit more, you can always check out the Patreon page where awesome people keep this channel going. All right, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Another thing I just realized, I haven't started a playlist for dungeons. Like, that's pretty bad. I gotta get on that.